let's face it, debates are frustrating. You get angry, you get upset, you don't like what the other person is saying, but you're not exactly sure what you can possibly say to change their mind or to win the debate. Well, here are some tips straight from Oxford on how to debate like an Oxford scholar. Tip number one, say something in Latin. Now, if you're surrounded by Oxford scholars, this isn't the best tip to take unless you actually know Latin because there's a good chance that the people around you will know Latin, or at least one of them will, and they will call you out on it. But if you're outside of that setting and you're able to assure yourself that no one around you actually knows Latin, then Latin is a very credible thing. You see, as long as something is stated in Latin, it must be true. Latin is the language of truth. So if you say something in Latin and then translate it to English, it must be true because you said it in Latin. For example, someone is a consequentialist and you don't like that. So they say, well, the only thing that matters about an action, whether or not it's moral or immoral, is just what happens afterwards, what comes of it, what are the consequences. That's all that matters. You're not sure what to say in response to that, so you just rattle something off that sounds like Latin. If you don't know Latin, it doesn't matter as long as they don't know. You say, ah, yes, that's an interesting point, but you're forgetting uh, des veritases eos doesis, which of course is Latin for consequences are not all. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there was an Latin, a Latin expression like that. Man, I thought I was right. It works, seriously. 99% of the time, it works all the time. Next, if they know Latin or you don't want to make something up in Latin or you don't think you can sell the idea that you actually know this Latin phrase, go with this because this works even more than 99% of the time, like 99.5 or more percent of the time. And that is, they're arguing something and you don't like what they're saying. And so you just say, well, you're just arguing semantics. Do you know what semantics is? doesn't matter. It does not matter if you know what it is, because they, they might not know what it is. And it doesn't matter. Because, one, if they don't know what semantics is, and you don't know what semantics is, you're still good, because you can always belittle them. Here's what you do. Well, you're just arguing semantics, they say. What's semantics? And you say, <laughs> You don't know what semantics is. Okay, how about this? You find out what semantics is, and then I'll have a real debate with you. Just write them off, right? Because they don't know what semantics is. It doesn't matter if you don't know what semantics is. You can still make them feel really bad. And making someone feel bad is just as good as winning a debate. Now, the other key, of course, is that semantics is really just language. The, the problems with language and putting things into language. And because everything we say, any kind of debate we try to have, involves language, then... You can make the case that, it might not be a good case, but you can make the case that pretty much anything anyone says is just semantics, because it all involves language. So as long as someone doesn't have a firm grasp on what that means, but they know kind of what semantics means, you can still get them, because they're using language, and there you go. Okay, the problem is, you got to be worried about someone using these techniques against you, okay? So what you want to do is, one, preface every single claim you can possibly make with some sort of generalization. So, not, not generalization, some sort of mm, mitigating phrase expression. So if you're going to state something, if you're going to state, say you're on the other side of the coin, you want to state that the consequences are all that matters in an action, right? Don't say the consequences are all that matters in an action. That's that's claiming way too much, and you're gonna people are gonna say no, that's not true. Claim. It seems like the consequences are all that matters. Or take out the all. You don't want superlatives. You don't actually state anything substantial like that. Just say it seems like sometimes the consequences matter. Sure, it's not that much of a claim, but at least no one's gonna really attack you on it. And if they do, you're gonna say what. It's, it doesn't seem like that to me. So if you preface things with it seems like and cut out all the superlatives, like all, all the time, always, um, without, a without exception, anything like that, cut that out. 
Uh, so, or, or some of the time, just preface everything with some of the time. So instead of the consequences are all that matters, sometimes the consequences matter. It seems like sometimes the consequences matter. If you preface things with those phrases, then it's much easier to make these claims without anyone saying, you're wrong. Because how can you be wrong if all you're saying is that it seems like it? Can you be wrong about observing that something seems like something? Doesn't seem like you can be wrong about that unless you're not actually observing. There's something wrong with your ability to perceive. Which there could be. So, number one. Say something in Latin. Even if you don't know Latin, claim it's in Latin. Usually as, like veritas. As is a good ending to put on words. Number two, claim that whatever they're saying or whatever they're arguing is just semantics. That you're just arguing over semantics and it's pointless. And, and if you can, belittle them so that they feel bad and don't want to debate anymore. And then number three, to defend against these things, always preface things with it seems like, or it could be, or sometimes never state anything fully that will protect you from pretty much from most things now that you're equipped you can go out and act 